is the next witness here. If uh, Sergeant Adams, if you can invite the next witness to the witness table, please. Thank you. Afternoon, Mr. Nathan. Please take your seat. You may remove your mask. Yeah. For the record, please state your name, your occupation and positions that you may hold. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the Committee of Privileges. My name is Yudhishtra Nathan. Um, my occupation is, a st I'm a graduate student, so um, that's kind of my position in yeah, my fine. university. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much for coming, uh, for being here today. Uh, the evidence that you'll be giving today before the committee will be taken on oath. And if you so desire, you can take an affirmation as well. So, clerk, please administer the oath. I, Yudhishtra Nathan, do solemnly, sincerely and truly declare and affirm that the evidence which I shall give before this committee shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, the Committee of Privilege is looking into the complaint made by the leader, leader of the House, Ms Indrani Raja, against former member of St Kang GRC, Ms Reisha Khan, for a breach of privilege. So again, thank you for attending today's hearing to give evidence before the committee and to answer the questions which members of the committee would like to put to you. Uh, you do have a solemn obligation to answer our questions truthfully. If you refuse to answer our questions directly or attempt to mislead the committee, such behaviour will be an offence and in contempt of this committee. I will now call on Minister Edwinton. You have questions? Thank you for being here to come and assist the COP. I just want to give you a, a, some opening remarks in the background. You know that Ms Han is facing a complaint by the Leader of the House. It relates to untruth spoken in Parliament and also a failure to substantiate allegations made in Parliament. That's the broad nature of the complaint. Uh, she has admitted to them, and I think you might be familiar with uh, what happened in Parliament on the 1st of November. This COP is set up to understand the specific circumstances, fact find, and also, in the appropriate case, to make recommendations as to the appropriate sanctions, if any. In that context, the nature and context and circumstances in which this took place would be relevant for us to consider, which is why we are inviting evidence from anybody who is able to shed light on how the statements came to be made and the events that took place thereafter. Because as you can appreciate, that goes towards the level and degree of culpability. So that's why uh, we are taking this evidence. In the course of um, this session, I will ask you specific questions. I'll be grateful you could answer them. If there's a need to elaborate and they're relevant, I'll ask you to elaborate on them. Along the way, there might also be, you might reference messages or emails or documents, and if they are relevant and subject to the Mr. Chairman's uh, approval, I will ask you to produce them as well to this COP. Finally, if there's anyone else in the course of giving your answer whom you think will be able to shed more light on relevant issues, please do raise them to us. Okay? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Mr. Nathan, uh, we contacted you yesterday because it arises from the evidence that Ms. Lowe gave us. And she told us that Ms. Lowe and yourself were close friends. Would that be right? Yes. And that you were both assisting Ms. Han in relation to the issues concerning the 3rd of August s s speech in Parliament? Um, issues arising from that speech? Issues arising thereafter, yes. yes. But not the preparation of the speech? No. Okay. Uh, you are presently a student, you said a graduate student. Yes. Now, just a little bit of background for of yourself. You started as a member of the Workers' Party in 2013. That will be correct? Uh, no, I started as a volunteer of the Workers' Party in 2013, but I only became a member, I think, in early 2016. Yes. And you are presently in the Workers' Party Youth Wing Exco? Uh, no, I'm no longer in the Youth Wing Exco okay. because my term had expired. I see. So when was that term up? Um, I believe, um, do forgive me if I get this wrong, um, 
uh, roughly around 2019. And up to that point in time, how, how long would you have spent in the youth wing ex school? Um, it was a two-year term, but the term got carried forward by, I think, about six months to a year because of COVID, because mm -hmm. we couldn't gather to have our conference. I see. You would have worked closely with Mr. Pereira, who was the president during the period of your term. Uh, yes. You, would you also have worked on occasion with senior members of the Workers' Party? In relation to the youth wing or...? On various matters. I mean, obviously, youth wing yes. would be a primary focus, but on various matters as well. Um, actually, no. Youth wing was just... I think in the Workers' Party, um, I'll speak for myself. Sure. So, like many other members, I wear several hats. So, um, in relation to your question, uh, yes, I do work with senior members of the Workers' Party leadership. Can you tell us who that would be? Um, pretty much all of the MPs at various points in time. Um, but primarily, because I'm a Sengkang GRC volunteer, um, have been so since um, the former member um, of parliament, Ms. Lili Lenz term, um, because I'm a resident there. So essentially, I'm based there. Um, so over the past, um, I'd say, two years, I've been working with the Sengkang GRC MPs uh, most of the time. Okay, but prior to that, you would also have worked with the other uh, elected MPs. Yes. So those from Aljunied GRC and from Aukang SMC. Yes. Yes, thank you. Are you a cadre member of the Workers' Party? Yes. Yes. You also featured in the G2020 video, I seem to recall. Yes, I was. <laughs> now, there's this phrase that's commonly uh, used to describe you. I just want to see whether that's accurate. You're known as the man behind the scenes. Is that come across as familiar? Um, I haven't heard that term being ascribed to me in particular, but I think it's fair to say that most of the members of the Workers' Party are men and women behind the scenes, so I would accept that. Okay, and uh, it was used of you in the context that you were often around, not always in the forefront, but often supporting party events and being involved in party activities. Yes. Yes, that would be a fair description of you. Yes. Okay. Um, to give you some context again, as I said, Ms. Lowe had some references to occasions when she was present with you. She, there were also some occasions where she had joint discussions with you, like, for example, across a Zoom session with Ms. Han. There would also have been occasions where she attended meetings with you, uh, together with you. And at various junctures, she said Mr. Nathan would be best to best place to corroborate certain things. So it is in that context that we've asked to meet with you. And those que the questions that I will ask you will focus on those areas. Ms. Han has also given evidence to this uh, Committee of Privileges. And you will see in front of you, to your right, next to the blue file, the transcripts from yesterday. So what I will do is I will refer you from time to time to those transcripts because it's best for you and I, I think best for you to hear exactly what they have said and then I'll ask you some questions, okay? So that's okay. what we will be doing. Now, let me just start with uh, what happened in August. So Ms. Han made a speech on the 3rd of August in Parliament. Uh, like you, we agreed earlier, you didn't assist in the preparation of the speech. But no. No, right? Yes. And, but shortly after the speech was made, you would have become aware that such a speech was made, correct? Yes. When would that be? Um, well, I was aware of the, that the speech had been made probably on the day itself when I heard about it in the news. Did you have a reaction to the speech? Um, yes, because by the time that I had become aware of the speech, I had also seen the um, exchange between Ms. Khan and um, Minister of State, if I'm getting his title right, I hope I am, um, yes. Desmond Tan. Yes. Um, and so I did watch that exchange and I thought that um, I initially thought that it was all right for Ms. Khan to have raised an anecdote. Um, as an MP, as MPs do, but 
I also think that agencies have a right to respond to that and to question that. Mm-hmm. At what juncture did you uh, did you speak to Miss Han at a point in time, or was it just an observation of the speech itself that you that you had? Um, I did speak to Miss Khan actually. I see. Can you tell us when and give us a gist of that conversation? All right. Um, I spoke to Miss Khan um, in between. Sorry. Uh, let me backtrack. I spoke to Miss Khan just after um, the exchange that she had with the minister, because she gave me a phone call. Wait. Can you? She gave you a phone call. Yes. This would be on the third of August. On the third of August. Okay. Can you uh, tell us roughly what time this was and maybe give us a gist of the conversation? Um, I think it must have been in the late afternoon. I can't remember the exact time. Um, all she said was that she asked me if I had watched the speech. Um, I told her that um, I, had, I hadn't, but I had caught up with it on the news um, through the live stream. And she told me that Mr. Pritam Singh was asking her for details about the victim whom she had accompanied. And she was worried because um, she was saying that uh, because of confidentiality reasons, she wouldn't have been able to provide that to him. Um, So I think she called me um, out of having a sense of discomfort of telling Mr. Singh that she wouldn't be able to provide him with the details. So I just told her, um, just tell Mr. Singh that because of confidentiality, if that's what you believe, then it it might be a problem to to get the details. At that point in time, did she tell you that the anecdote that she cited was untrue? No. So you gave her your views on the basis that the anecdote was true? Yes. Yes but that the only reason uh, operative at the point in time for not disclosing further details was confidentiality? Yes. Um, Well, actually, I would add that uh, Ms. Khan mentioned to me that she had met this victim by way of helping at some organisation. And so... It was both the issue of confidentiality and also the issue that hypothetically if there had been a... Well, not hypothetically at that time, but to my knowledge, if there had been such an organisation, then because of confidentiality, she might not have been able to get the information from the organisation. So I said, perhaps you could um, explain this to Mr Singh, if that's what you agree with. But all that was on the basis that you had not been aware that the anecdote was false. Yes. So you were giving views, I mean, like any other member of the public watching the speech. Yes. Okay. Was there anything else discussed on this no. occasion? No. Was it a long call, short call? Uh, it was a rather short call. Okay. Now, I'm assuming that after the 3rd of August, until the next reference point I have, which is the 7th of August, you didn't hear further from Ms. Khan on this issue. Um, no, I, no, I said no to your question because I did have a conversation with her where, um, she expressed to me again that she had problems giving Mr. Singh the details and so, um, I again repeated what I had told her in the phone call. When was this? Um, I think, I I can't remember the exact date but it was between, it was after the 3rd of August and before the 7th of August. Let me now go to the 7th of August. If you see a stack of papers to the right of the blue file, could you please pick it up? To give you a sense, Mr. Nathan, these are documents which Ms. Lowe had furnished to us yesterday. And they also, uh, they contain uh, chats to which you are also privy. So if I can ask you to please turn to page... Um, well, first of all, the first page you will see that that's a chat group that you have with Ms. Han and Ms. Lo, correct? Yes. And here she's, there's an exchange of information or comments about the speech itself. I would like you to turn over the page to page two. On page two, 
there's a chat exchanged on the 7th of August. And in the evening, Miss Han says, it's probably one of the worst things I've done in my life. And uh, it is not clear who this is, is who's responding. I uh, can't really tell. It says, what did you do, Ray? This sounds scary. Was that from you or from Miss Lo? Miss Lo. Miss Lo. And then she says, perhaps if you guys are free tomorrow and come over. When she says you guys, it means Miss Lo and yourself. Yes. I did something stupid and unnecessary. Miss Lo then says, is it internal and easy to contain? Answer, yes, if Pritam wishes for it to be. He is the only other person besides my husband to know. Did you resign? I didn't. Now, pausing there for a moment, at this juncture, were you aware of this chat, this discussion? Yes. Y you were. So you knew that there was something bad, in her words, that had happened. Yes. Or one of the worst things in my life, as she says. Did you know what it was? No. But you knew that Miss Han's husband and Mr. Singh were the only people who knew about it at this juncture? According to what Miss Khan had informed us, um, in accordance with that, yes. Okay. I'm told you then had a Zoom meeting with Miss Lo and Miss Han on the same day. Yes, that evening that or evening. night, rather. So on the 7th of August? Yes. Okay, can you briefly describe what happened at the Zoom meeting? So at the Zoom meeting, Miss Khan had reiterated that she had done something terrible. Um, and essentially she told us that it related to the speech that she had made on the 3rd of August and that she had essentially lied in her speech about having followed the victim to the police station. Um, she said that... Um, she then broke down um, and she explained to us the context of the, the sexual assault that she had experienced... Um, which she relate to the house on the 1st of November. Which relate to the? Which she relate to the, oh, house, the house about the sexual assault yes. on the 1st of November. Yes. What else was discussed at the Zoom meeting? At the Zoom meeting... Um, oh, uh, I, I think we had we had asked her um, who else knows about this once again, whether she had informed the party leaders, most importantly. Um, and she said that she had um, she had informed Mr. Singh prior to our Zoom meeting. Um, and we had a conversation about the assault. Um, and she shared that it had occurred overseas during her university days. What did she say she had informed Mr. Singh? I just want to be clear, because when you yes. say she's informed, what exactly was it that you understood her to have informed Mr. Singh about? Based on my understanding, I took away that she had informed Mr. Singh that she had lied in Parliament. Um, and at that juncture, I don't think I was very certain as to whether she had informed him about the assault. Okay. But you were clear in your mind from what she said that Mr. Singh was aware that there was a falsehood said in Parliament on the 3rd of August? Yes, okay. according to Ms. Khan. Now, I'd like you to look at the bundle of the transcripts and I wanted to show you what Ms. Lowe's reaction was when I asked her about this point. If you could please turn to page 21. Mr. Uh, Nathan, these are raw transcripts in that they have not been edited, so there are some minor typographical errors and so on, which will be corrected eventually. But if you look at line 15, I asked, were you concerned that a statement had been made in Parliament that was not true? Ms. Lowe said, yes, I was concerned. Were you similarly concerned? Of course. Thank you. And did you give her any views on that? Ms. Lowe said, I didn't feel a need to because, as I said, at that point in time, of time, she told me, I also had knowledge that our party leader, Mr. Pritam Singh, already knew, and it didn't feel like I needed to take any further action on that. Then I asked her whether she was able to describe Mr. Nathan's reaction on Zoom discussion. So let me pause there for a moment and ask you two questions. First, what was your reaction 
to being told that Mr. Singh was aware and apprised of the situation? And secondly, depending on what you say to the first question, whether you would also subscribe to Ms. Lowe's sentiment that since Mr. Singh, as the party leader, was already aware, they, she didn't feel that any further action needed to be taken on that. So going back to the first part of your question, you asked me about my reaction to the knowledge that Mr. Singh had known. I would say that I was glad, um, I mean, which is a word, a weird word to use given the very sad circumstances. Um, but I was glad because at least um, the party leadership knew. I think instinctively we, uh, I can speak for myself, and I, I do believe Ms. Lowe uh, viewed it the same way. We wanted, um, we were concerned as to whether the party leaders knew. Because obviously if um, an MP comes to you and says, I lied in Parliament, uh, I think it's only right that the party leaders are aware of it and that they investigate the matter. Yes. I think besides feeling glad, I think really what you're saying is you're assuaged that the party leadership was aware. Yes. And felt that this was in their hands. Yes. Yes. Did you have Although, any... can I clarify? Yes. Um, because you mentioned party leadership. Um, so, insofar as party leadership can refer to one person, okay. in, in this case, at this point in time, it was Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for being precise. Now... Um, so therefore, I take it that you also would agree with what Ms. Lo expressed here? Yes. Okay. If you remember, there was a press conference yesterday by the Workers' Party. Yes. And if you like, I can show you the press report. But if you remember, there was one statement made by Mr. Singh that when Ms. Han first discussed it with him, she had to, he had to press her for the truth and that she was not forthcoming initially. Now, in that context, I'd like you to, since you were discussing this with her on the 7th of August, did you think that she was holding anything back from Mr. Singh and not being truthful to Mr. Singh? I feel like I can't quite answer that question because I've no first-hand knowledge of exactly what she had told Mr. Singh. All right. I'm asking you based on your own impression. Being in a Zoom meeting, having a discussion with her, in fact, you had a prior discussion with her on the 3rd of August itself. Of course, at that point in time, you didn't know. But now that you are aware and she had made an account to you, you felt glad, persuaded. So what's your, your impression? I'm just asking you for that. My impression was that it was good that she had told Mr. Singh and informed him that she had lied. Um, but I think at that point in time, um, I can understand why Mr. Singh said that. Because at that point in time when I heard that, um, I mean, naturally, I think when an MP tells you I've lied in Parliament, um, well, my first reaction was, why on earth would you do that? After everything that we worked for. Um, first of all. Secondly, um, the question then becomes exactly why did you lie in Parliament? What made you think that that was a good idea? So in Ms. Khan's case, it was related to the sexual assault. And I think even at that point in time, um, of course, even though it's sorry, natural Mr. to... Arvin, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I just want... Maybe I wasn't clear in my question. I, I, I was just after this, actually. Was there any doubt as of the 7th of October, uh, August, when you had this Zoom conversation with Ms. Han and Ms. Lo? Was there any doubt that Mr. Singh was aware that a falsehood had been said in Parliament by Ms. Han on the 3rd of August, in your mind? In my mind, based on what Ms. Khan had told us, no. There was no doubt. Did you have any reason to believe that Ms. Han by this time, would be less than honest with Mr. Singh about the falsehood? I feel like I can't say a definite yes or no to that answer because as I was about to explain earlier, my own reaction was that you did this because of the context of the assault. But I think I hadn't quite understood the thought process in between um, experiencing 
that assault, of course, um, and okay. essentially no, I, lying I, in public. I'm, I mean, in a way, whilst that is one of the issues, I, I'm not here exploring the thought process behind the assault because All right. you know it's not germane to my my line of questioning. I'm trying to establish if, as of seventh of August, Mr. Singh was aware that a falsehood had been said in Parliament by Ms. Hart. Yes. Yes. And that, in fact, was the entire premise of having this Zoom conversation in the first place, right? That she had spoken to Mr. Singh about it, told him about it, and now wanted to discuss it with yourself and Ms. Lo. I'm not sure if the premise was that she wanted to discuss it with us because she had discussed it with him first. It was more of, I think, she just wanted to... Apprise you and Ms. Lo of the fact that she had told him. Um, no, that she had told a lie in the first place. And told him. Um, and when we had questioned her, she said that she had told him. Okay. And in that context, you used the word glad, and I said a switch, and you agreed. Right? Yes. Okay. Now, um, Ms. Han then said that the next day, she had arranged to meet with Mr. Singh, Mr. Manap, and Ms. Silva Lim at Mr. Pritam Singh's home. Were you aware of this meeting before it took place? No. no. But you do know that they met on the next day, on the 8th of August, at Mr. Singh's home, at some stage, right? Uh, I was aware on the 8th of August that she had had a conversation with Mr. Singh, Ms. Sylvia Lim and Mr. Faisal Mana, but I'm not aware of when, when that conversation had occurred exactly. Okay. My, my impression was that it was between, um, certainly between the 3rd of August and um, the 8th of August, inclusive of the 8th. Well, put it this way, Mr. Nathan, you had a conversation with Ms. Uh, Khan on the 7th of August, quite late in the evening, after 7 p.m. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And at a, as of that date, she didn't tell you that there was a meeting with Mr. Manap and Mr. Ms. Lim. No. So it couldn't have taken place prior to that, right? Uh, unless she omitted that information, but I would... Don't speculate. I mean, as far okay. as you know, she didn't As far as I know, you, right? No. Okay. In fact, in the context of the kind of discussion you were having on Zoom, it would have been natural for her to have said it to you if there was such a meeting, right? Yes. Yes. The next day, at about 12.30 p.m., she sent a text, including to you. If you can pick up the same bundle again, you will see it. On page where we left off earlier, you just go further down the page. Yes. On 8th of August at 12.41 p.m., she updates. She says, hey, guys, and I think this, this time around you're on the chat, right? Um, the chat group only consisted of the three of us. Yes, okay. But it therefore means she's addressing it to your Miss Lo and yourself. Yes. I just met with Pritam, Silva and Faisal. I just met, so meaning sometime on the 8th of August. Um, possibly, yes. I would, I would um, assume that's a reasonable um, interpretation of what she said. What's your interpretation? When you received this message on the 8th of August at 12.41pm, I just met with Pritam, Silva and Faisal. Um, that it was that morning. Yes, thank yes. you. Now, let's, I'm not trying to find ways to trip you up on language. I'm just trying to get to the facts. So, I've had to establish, because you, you started by telling me sometime between the 3rd and the 7th. So, I've had to establish that it could not have been between the 3rd or the 7th, 7pm, because there was a Zoom. There was this message. So I don't think we are trying to play games in terms of the language. Um, no, I okay. totally accept. I totally accept your I, point. And yep. if you have any need for a clarification, please stop me and I'll show you the transcripts and I'll show you what Ms. Khan and Ms. Lo said. I'm not trying to put words in their mouth. In fact, I put the transcript in front of you so that you know exactly what they said. And then I'll ask you on that premise. Okay? So on the 8th of August, sometime before 12.41pm, there was a meeting. Ms. Khan has given evidence that this took place at Mr. Singh's house, for your information. Okay. And we spoke about the Muslim issues and the police accusation. I told him what I told you guys. 
and they've agreed that the best thing to do is to take the information to the grave. They also suggested that I write a statement to send out this evening. When you received this message, what was your takeaway? What was your impression of this message? My impression was that I was surprised because I assumed that when Ms. Khan had informed them that they would investigate the matter further. Um, and so when they said that they would take it to the grave, as Ms. Khan had put it, I was surprised by that. Your understanding of the phrase, take it to the grave, means don't clarify the truth and let it be, correct? Yes. I'd like to show you what Ms. Khan said to me when I asked her about the same uh, occasion. So if you could please pick up that bundle and please, Mr. Nathan, look at um, page 160. I wanted to give you the context so that you know finally where, this come, where the questions would come from. So the context starts at line... Uh, Eight or nine meeting was at Mr. Pritam Singh's house, she says. And then I said, on this occasion, Ms. Lim and Mr. Manam were present. She says, yes. I asked her at line 13, did you put in clear terms to them as well that the statement you had made was false? Answer, yes. Could they have misunderstood? No, they could not. What was their reaction to this? Answer by Ms. Khan, it was incredible disappointment. There was a lot of anger, but I think there was some compassion there as well. The reaction was that if I were not to be pressed, then the best thing to do would be to retain the narrative that I began in August. I said, let me understand the last statement. You said if you, are, you were not going to be pressed and then you take the narrative that you started in August, yes, it means if we can get away with it, we don't need to clarify the lie, correct? Ms. Khan says, I think in the simplest terms, yes, you are correct. So it was in this context that I asked Ms. Khan then, what did she communicate to yourself and to Miss Lo? And if you go over the page, at page 162, I then asked, did you discuss this with Miss Lo thereafter? She says, yes, I did. In those discussions, did you give an account of what happened? Yes, I did. Would that be by messages? Yes, that would be by messages. And those messages would capture the thrust of what you had discussed with Mr. Singh, Mr. Manap, and Miss, Miss Lim. Then she says yes, and then I asked her whether those messages at line 19 would have been contemporaneous, meaning they would have been roughly around the same time as when you concluded the meeting with the three of them. Answer, yes. So this was Ms. Han's takeaway from it. I, I know you were not there at the meeting, so I'm not going to ask you about what you, what you perceived of that meeting, but would your impression or your takeaway from receiving this message that we have just seen on the 8th of August at 12.41 p.m. be consistent with what Ms. Han had told us yesterday? In other words, that if you are not pressed for any answer on this, you can let it be and don't have to clarify. That is the impression that I got between, uh, I mean, from her message um, based on... A message as reflected in this screenshot here. Right. Now, Ms. Lo and Ms. Han told us that after this occasion on the 8th of August, there was not much, if at all, discussion on this issue for the next six weeks or so. Would that also be your recollection? Yes. Six weeks or so meaning until around the 3rd of October. The 3rd of October... Um, I will come to the October sitting in Parliament in a moment, but okay. I just want to get your evidence as to whether between the 8th of August mm -hmm. and roughly the 3rd of October, there was any other discussion, meetings, chats concerning this issue? Not with um, myself involved or with Ms. Lowe. As in, the three of us didn't meet to discuss this issue. In fact, we were... Um, we were discussing the the other issue on Muslim issues, which occupied the second part of her speech. Yes, okay, I understand. But besides that, on the question of the false anecdote, was there any discussion? 
I don't recall any discussion. Okay. If Miss Han had a separate discussion with Mr. Singh, Mr. Manap or Miss Lim, would it be your expectation that she would update you and Miss Lo? Do you mean during that period of time? Yes. Um, and just as she did when she went to have a meeting on the 8th of August, she sent you a message almost immediately after. So my yes. question is, the two of you on a group chat with her, from what I gather from both of Miss Han and Miss Lo, the three of you are quite tight, and you do, do spend some time discussing these issues. Miss Lo says she cared for Miss Han's well-being and was concerned with her, given that she felt that making a false statement in Parliament was serious. So it is in that context I'm asking whether you would expect that if Miss Han had further interaction with any of the three in the Workers' Party who were aware of the falsehood, whether she would have updated you? I don't think she would have necessarily updated us be during that period of time, um, simply because most of the time we're not privy to conversations that MPs have with um, the leadership of the party, um, unless they choose to share it with us. But I would imagine that at some point she would have shared that. And... As of now, I mean, you're not aware of any discussion that she might have had with the Workers' Party between the Workers' Party, three of the Workers' Party senior leaders who met her on the 8th of August, between the 8th of August and sometime in October, early October, right? Um, actually... As far as you know. Are you asking me in relation to a particular point in time or as in from my point of view or as so, of now? So either... Now, or at that time. That's your frame of mind, okay? Okay. The relevant date period would be 8th of August, which is the date on which this message was sent, Yes. until the 3rd of October, which is the eve of the next parliamentary sitting in October. So this is the date range, almost two months. My question is, did you know then, or do you know now, of any discussion that Ms. Han may have had with either Mr. Singh, Ms. Lim or Mr. Manap concerning the false anecdote said in Parliament? I believe as of the 3rd of August um, as no, well as Mr. Nathan Yes 8th August Oh, uh, um, October my apologies I meant, uh, I meant 3rd October, sorry um, As of 3rd October um, as well as 4th October at that point in time I was not aware that she had um, had a conversation with the party leaders, from what I recall. Okay. As of now, do you know of any discussion that Ms. Han may have had with the party leaders, those three in question, in this time zone? Yes. You were aware? Yes. Okay. Tell us which date she had a meeting or discussion with the party leaders. The date that I recall is the 3rd of October on the eve of the 4th October parliamentary sitting. Okay. Prior to the 3rd October, in this date range, are you aware of any other meetings or discussions that she had with the three party leaders? I can't recall, but I, I honestly can't recall now, but I think perhaps I could get back to you if, if, that's, something that is, if, if that's something that you'd like to hear from me in future. Yes, I, I, again, I'm not trying to... Uh, surprise you or, or trick you, okay? So please don't look like you're very worried. I'm trying to establish a frame of mind. And Ms. Han had told us that there were no discussions. Ms. Lo had told us that because it was that was the decision that was passed down and it was in pretty clear terms, that was how it was left off. Ms. Han's impression was, as she told me, if I'm not pressed, we let the lie remain. No need to clarify the truth and she was not pressed, and so nothing happened in this period of time. I'm just trying to get your recollection of the same occasion. I would say that I have no recollection of there having been, of myself having been informed of a meeting before the 3rd of August. Okay. Uh, right. 3rd of October, sorry. <laughs> of October. I apologise. Okay. The, that's as far as Ms Han is concerned now. There is one uh, occasion which Ms. Lowe referred us to 
where this issue briefly came into play. And that was on the 10th of August. Okay, I'll, I'll just show you what she said to me and I'll see whether you recall. So if you could please pick up the bundle again. Yes. And please turn to page one two eight. Somewhere around the middle of the page, Ms. Lowe was responding to a question from me concerning uh, some of the press reports from yesterday. Uh, if you could quickly cast your eye over the next few lines, she says, admittedly, I was not privy to the specifics of the conversation between Ms. Khan and Mr. Singh, and so on. Line 24, so when Ms. Khan told me on 7 August the truth, I had a meeting with Mr. Pritam Singh on 10th August on a separate matter. And while we were waiting, and, I mean, your, your name was omitted from this, but she referred to you here. I don't know why she said poor Mr. Nathan um, was also I? with me at this meeting about a separate matter. We are good friends, okay? Briefly, Mr. Pritam Singh confirmed that he knew with me. Now, this was Ms. Lowe's account. I'm now asking for your recollection of this account. So, what had happened was that I was informed by Ms. Lowe that Mr. Pritam Singh had wanted to meet the two of us, um, on the 10th of August. Um, and so, but the thing is, he hadn't told us why he wanted to meet us. So we had assumed that um, perhaps, because we found out on the 7th of August, so we thought, okay, perhaps um, he wanted to discuss this with us or to, to find out our views or to find out perhaps what we had known or had heard from his Khan. Um, but it actually turned out that when we met Mr. Singh, um, he the purpose the main purpose of the meeting was to discuss another party matter um completely unrelated which he wanted our input um on but on the sidelines of that meeting we did discuss um uh miss khan having uh, essentially told us that having come clean what does that mean having come clean um, having come clean in the sense having admitted of that admitted she that she lied, spoken yeah, a lie in parliament. Yes. Okay. Can you describe the nature of the conversation that you had with Mr. Singh with Miss Lo? From what I recall, um, we of course expressed disappointment that Miss Khan had lied and shock. Um, but I think from what I recall, Miss Lo and uh, Mr. Singh were talking about how, or rather, Miss Lo was telling Mr. Singh that sexual assault victims do experience trauma, and that can sometimes um, make them, in some circumstances, be less likely to to want to to tell the truth out of fear, perhaps. Um, I remember Miss Lowe saying that this was a point that she wanted to communicate to Mr. Singh. Um, just from her own, um, Miss Lowe happens to be someone who has um, good knowledge about um, issues of um, women's rights and um, sexual assault cases in Singapore. And so, um, just to summarize, my understanding of that meeting, uh, as, re as it relates to the lie, was that we all had, we were on the same page in terms of knowing that she had um, lied to Parliament and in terms of knowing that she had cited the sexual assault as her reason for that. Okay, a few questions. Did Mr. Singh tell you or Ms. Lo that Ms. Han had to come to Parliament at the next sitting to clarify the lie? No. Did Mr. Singh say to you that it was important for Ms. Sun to quickly inform her family of the sexual assault incident so that she could then proceed to clear up the lie in Parliament? No. Did Mr. Singh discuss with either yourself or Ms. Lo any steps to be taken in relation to the clarification of the lie, perhaps outside of Parliament, on social media, on other platforms that you might have had? No. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Apart from 
So if I understand your evidence correctly, between 8th of August and the 2nd of October, as far as you know, there were no discussions between Ms. Han and the senior leadership of the Workers' Party, comprising Mr. Singh, Mr. Manap and Ms. Lim. As far as I know, no. Okay. And as far as you were involved, this occasion we have just gone through on the 10th of August was the only occasion where you had occasion to discuss with Mr. Singh or anyone else in the Workers' Party senior leadership about this issue? No. Um, that's not true okay. because... Okay. Um, Tell me. Okay, so essentially the first time was on the 10th of August at that meeting with Ms. Lowe. Um, the second time, the next um, time we discussed it was on the 12th of October. Yes, okay. Mr. Nathan, I asked you about 8th of August until 2nd of October. Ah, I, I do apologise. Um, so in that case, no. Okay, thank you. Now... I will come to the 12th of October in a moment, but I just following the chronology. On the 3rd of October, again, I know you were not present and you only learned about it subsequently, and I think it was around the 12th of October. Uh, it was on the 12th of October, yes. I just have that as a marker for the time being, but based on what you found out on 12th of October, on the 3rd of October, Mr. Singh went to visit Ms. Han at her home. Yes. Right? Were you aware of what they had discussed? Only insofar as Mr. Singh had related it to us, um, us meaning Ms. Lo and I, um, at his residence on the 12th of October. Okay. Did Mr. Singh tell you that he discussed with Ms. Han the possibility that the issue might arise in Parliament on the next day, the 4th of October? Yes. Yes. And did he discuss with you Maybe it's best I show you Ms. Han's recollection and then I'll ask you whether you, it comports with what you discussed with Mr. Singh so that I don't put words in her mouth, okay? Okay. Um, page 153 of this transcript. So, at the top, you see, I started with some questions. Um... And then I referred her to, I think this was in the context of some press statements made yesterday. And I'd like you to focus on line 13. Can you remember the occasion at which you were asked to clarify the statement before the October sitting? Ms. Han says at line 16, before the October sitting, I had a conversation with leader of the opposition, Pritam Singh. And the conversation was that if I were to retain the narrative, of if I were to continue the narrative, there would be no judgment. Can you tell us which date this took place, 3rd October? Where did this take place? In my house. Now, would Ms. Khan's account of it here be consistent with what Mr. Singh informed you? Yes. Okay. Now, keeping with the chronology, on the 4th of October, there was a parliamentary sitting. Ms. Han then proceeds to Parliament, and Ms. Minister Shanmugam raised several questions to Ms. Han. Ms. Han had accepted that her answers, at least some of her answers to Minister Shanmugam's questions, were untrue. I think you would be aware of which statements they were. If you like, I can take you through it, but... I think it's a matter of record what she said on the 1st of November to Minister Indrani. As far as you are aware, at the time these statements were made, which were false, the only people who were aware that they were false at that time would be Mr. Singh, Mr. Manap, and Ms. Lim, correct? In terms of the... False anecdote. WP, Parliamentary Party, then yes. Apart from that, it would have been... Ms. Lo, myself, and Ms. Khan's husband. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, what I meant was in, in Parliament. All right. The yes. only people you are aware of would be aware that it was false was Mr. Singh, Mr. Ms. Mr. Manap, and Ms. Lim. Yes. Right? Were you aware that after... Okay, let me back up a little bit. Did you speak to Ms. Han either before or after the speech was made? I Did she call you? Did you call her? Did you text her? Um, on the 4th of October, I don't think we had... I don't recall having had a conversation with her. Um, it's possible that we might have had, but I might have forgotten it. Um, Can you think carefully and see whether you're able to verify with your phone if it goes that back that far, whether you sp spoke to her or she spoke to you, or whether you had exchanged messages either before she spoke in Parliament or after? Um, certainly after, but I don't think it was on the 4th of October. Okay, can you give me a rough idea when you spoke with her? Uh, I spoke with her on, from my recollection, either on the 12th of October or just before. Okay, and what was the gist of that conversation? Uh, Ms Khan had given me a phone call and she said, um, Yudish, Pritam and Sylvia want me to come clean to Parliament and I think that I want to do so as well. That's essentially what she told me. That was just before the 12th October which triggered the meeting that you had? Yes. Okay, but... Um, Shortly after the speech was made, was there any discussion that you had with her? I can't recall now. Okay. Could you please check, maybe later on when you have your phone, either in terms of the messages on whichever platform you normally communicate, and also your phone logs, okay? All right. Were you aware that after she made the speech in Parliament, Ms Han had a meeting with Mr Singh and Ms Lim in Parliament in the LO office? Um, could you repeat your question, sorry? Yes, of course. Were you aware that after she made the speech in Parliament, Ms Han had a meeting with Mr Singh and Ms Lim in Parliament in the LO office? This is the speech on the 3rd of August? 4th of October. On the 4th of October, no, I was not aware of that. Okay, now let's, so I'm clear, between the 4th of October and this conversation that you said took place around the 12th of October, were there other discussions you had with Ms Han on this issue? I can't recall. Okay, did you have any discussions with anyone else on this issue? I can't recall. I don't think so. Okay, perhaps, uh, I mean, I don't expect you to remember offhand, but maybe you can check your phone logs again and maybe the messages to right. see if that jogs any memory of any discussions on this, okay? Now, let's go to the 12th of October now. You would have uh, had a conversation call from Ms Han, yes. and she says she wants to come and explain and clarify in Parliament. Ms Lo told us that yourself and Ms Lo then asked to see Mr Singh. Yes. Can you... Tell us why you made the request to see Mr. Singh. I think um, we were concerned that, I mean, of course, you know, it was good that she wanted to come clean, but we were concerned, um, or at least I was concerned on two fronts. The first was that um, it, was, it was more of a concern of how she would make an apology, what information she would share um, in doing so. Um, so, for example... My take was that if she were to tell Parliament that she lied to Parliament, it would also be important that um, she explains the reasons as to why she lied to Parliament. But Ms Lo and I, because we were very well aware of Ms Khan's um, anxiety over the matter and her mental health, um, we knew that um, even though it was important, um, and of course we, we believed that it was important for her to explain the reason, um, that it would be important for her to also be sure that she's comfortable explaining and essentially telling the whole country that she was sexually assaulted. Um, so we just wanted to have a conversation with Mr Singh um, about 
that. Okay. And so that uh, evening, you had a meeting with Mr. Singh, right? Miss Lo and yourself. Yes. Was Miss Han present? No. Did you report to Miss Han what was discussed and what had transpired? Yes. You did. What did you tell her? Um, I would have told her that. What did I tell her? I, I think I would have told her, um, that Mr. Singh had relayed to us what he had told her on the third of October. Yes. That's the conversation about. Uh, I showed you earlier mm. about retaining the narrative. There'll be no judgment, right? Yes. That's the one. Okay. Did you? So you you told Miss Han that mm. this is what Mr. Singh told you he had told her on the 3rd of October? Yes. Am I clear enough? Yes. Okay. Besides that, was there anything else of significance that happened on 12th of October? On the 3rd of October... 12th, 12th sorry. Oh, on the 12th of October, of significance... No, that was the, the thing that struck me the most. Okay. Um, oh, I, I could add that we, um, or rather I have added earlier that we were there to talk about um, just making sure that Mr. Singh had also um, spoken to Ms. Khan about her comfort level of um, bringing up the assault uh, and also the importance of bringing up the, the assault um, to Parliament in her explanation. So that was what we, we were there to, to talk about. With Mr. Singh? Yes. Okay. Which, and the importance of that, I mean, the two, I would say at least two angles to that. First, the importance of that would be to explain why there was a lie. Yes. And the other would obviously be to explain or try and give an explanation as to why and how she came to know of this account. Yes. Right, I, as I understand it, I mean, the way in which she put the explanation, it was because she was assaulted, she was herself part of the group. In that context, she heard about it. Yes. And so that was the construct of the explanation, so to speak, right? Yes. Okay. After the 12th of October, there would have been various attempts to draft a statement that she would eventually deliver on the 1st of November, right? Yes. I'm told that you did not draft it, but you gave input. Yes. Can you just describe the process to me? Okay. What did you do? Who else gave input? What comments came in? What was the nature of the edits that were sought to be made to this statement? Um, so, first of all, uh, Ms. Lo and I, we gave inputs um, just like how we've um, been giving inputs and just like how other members give inputs to MP speeches in Parliament from time to time when um, we are asked to, to help um, or indeed if we, if we offer to help. Um, and so as in other cases and like in this case, the nature of the inputs were of say um, improving the flow of the language um, uh, making sure that we could read it and understand what she meant. And so if we didn't understand what she meant, we would tell her, okay, maybe you, you could be a bit clearer about this part. Um, maybe you could rearrange certain paragraphs so that the flow is better. So um, we were involved um, primarily in that regard, um, but also Mr. Singh and... Miss Lim were, were involved in the drafting of the statement. But I should add that the statement that she put to, to the House um, in terms of the um, material context of the, of, of the statement, the material contents of the statement, sorry, um, those were all um, Miss Khan's views. What was the... How was this draft edited? I mean, was it, do you sit down together in one place or did you send it by comments? Was it in writing? It was in writing, pen and paper. Pen and paper? Yes. Did you meet physically? Um, we did meet physically, I can't remember how many times. Sorry, Mr. Nam. 
So it was a pen and paper process. Yes. Written on drafts. Yes. And coming together to meet with each other to discuss the the, edit, the edits. Yes. So essentially, um, we, uh, Miss Lo and I, we were there. Um, we contributed to some of the edits, but my understanding is that there were drafts going between Miss Khan and Mr. Singh. Um, or rather, Mr. Singh, Miss um, Khan would report her draft to Mr. Singh. Okay. So there were quite a number of drafts. How many meetings were there? I can't remember the number of meetings, but... Um, that, you re- that you attended, how many? That I attended... Uh, I can't remember the exact number, but one meeting does stand out because at that meeting, um, all of us were present. Miss Khan, Mr. Singh, Miss Lim, Miss Lo and myself. At least one meeting, all of you were present. Yes. But there were other meetings where not all of you were present. There were other meetings where I don't... So so the reason why I'm... Uh, not, the reason why I can't remember is because yeah. we had... Commu- so Miss Lo, Miss Khan and myself, we had communicated back and forth about Miss um, Khan's concerns about her language in the draft. So... I can't remember how many meetings we okay. might have had. Okay. Based on these discussions, the meetings, the comments, the edits that were that you're aware of, would you say that the eventual draft that was delivered by Ms. Khan on the 1st of November was something that Mr. Singh and Ms. Lim were comfortable with? Yes. Because they gave their input... And you said there were many drafts, presumably to reflect the different edits. Yes. Okay. Prior to this call that you had with Ms. Khan, I think you said on 12 October, or perhaps shortly before that, where she said, I'm now going to clarify the statement and tell the truth now. Were you aware of any other occasion on which she had articulated that desire or that intention prior to 12 October? Prior to 12 October, not very explicitly, but Ms. Lo and I had had conversations with her. Because as Ms. Lo had put it to me yesterday, her sense was that it's better to come clean in Parliament about the falsehood. Was that also your view? Um, Yes. Uh, And also Ms. Lo had the view that Ms. Khan should account to the WPCC. Okay, yes, she did tell us that. Yes. But that was something between the three of you. Yes. But did, did uh, on any other occasion, did Ms. Khan say, to your knowledge, say to the Workers' Party leadership that she was going to uh, clarify the truth prior to 12 October? No, not to my knowledge. Were you aware of any occasion on which the Workers' Party senior leadership, any one of them, telling Ms. Khan to do so, Prior to 12 October? Prior to 12 October, instructing her, telling her no. In the press conference yesterday, there were several articles which picked up Mr. Singh's comment to the press, where he had said, and I'm quoting this from memory, my colleague will try and find the relevant portion, where he had said, where he had characterized the instruction to Ms. Khan to clarify the untruths in October, in the October sitting of Parliament, as an order, in inverted commas, an order. To your knowledge, was this something that Ms. Khan had shared with you? No. From your interaction with Ms. Han, and I'm talking about starting from 8 October, uh, 8 August, we went through that, all the way through to 3rd October, 4th October, and you said that there might have been a conversation just before 12 October. In this period of time, it would have been inconsistent for there to have been such an order for Ms. Khan to clarify in Parliament in October, would it not? It would have been inconsistent, yes. Because we are talking about a message that was sent which says, take the information to the grave in August. Nothing was heard thereafter for the next six weeks. In October, there was a discussion which says, you retain the narrative, there'll be no judgment on you. On 4th October, the statement was repeated in Parliament. In fact, Ms. Han defended the position. 
as it turned out, falsely. But three members of the senior leadership of Workers' Party were present in Parliament, at least on 4th of October when the statement was made. So in that context, I think you would agree with me that any suggestion that prior to the sitting on the 4th of October that there was an order for Ms Khan to clarify the falsehoods in Parliament in October would be untenable, right? Yes. Earlier on, I talked about a CNA article. I just want to, for completeness, read it to you so that you, you understand where I'm coming from. This is what I read to Ms. Lowe yesterday as well. There was an article which quotes Mr. Singh yesterday as saying, Sorry, Mr. Nathan, just give me a moment. No worries. Sorry, give me a minute or two, okay? No worries at all. I'm trying to find it. Can you please turn to page 131 of the bundle? Sorry, sorry. To give you context, at 130, I was quoting from a CNA report. I said that at page 130, line 3 and line 4. So I read various portions. The portion I'd like you to focus on is at 131, where... I said at line 10, let me quote another portion to you. When asked why the claim was allowed to remain, I think the word is unchecked or unclarified, Mr. Pritam Singh said, and I quote, each is a leader in his or own, her own right, and if you have done something wrong, it is your responsibility to set the record right. But only Raisha knew the truth of what she had said and what she had experienced, and it is up to her to clarify the record. And I think that would have been adequately communicated through her personally. And in one of the responses to a, one of the answers in response to a query from the press, Mr. Singh used the word order that uh, why she didn't follow orders to clarify the falsehood. And let me just read it to you. It says, at, if you go to the same bundle at 132, bottom of the page, I'll go on to say that the press then asked Mr. Singh some questions, and this is what the report says, and I read it to you. In response to questions over why Ms. Khan did not follow orders to clarify the matter in October, Mr. Singh said, why she didn't take heed of that instruction? Why did she ignore it? And this is not a question I can answer. So it was in that context that I had asked you those questions. And I think I've got your answers on the record, so thank you very much. In the, just to pick up on the chronology again, in the WhatsApp chats that Ms. Lowe had given to us, there was one reference to a 22nd October meeting to discuss the draft of the statement that will be delivered in Parliament. 
So I take it that at least on that day, um, there was such a meeting, and uh, Mr. Singh says to Ms. Lo, let Yudish know as well that presumably is you and you were present at the meeting. So that at least on 22nd of, of, uh, of October, there was such a meeting, correct? Yes. So that uh, was the meeting that I referred to earlier. Yes, where you met together and you, I think Mr. Singh was present, Ms. Lim was present. Yes. And you exchanged comments on the draft and there were some handwritten notes and uh, settled on the drafting. Yes. But I assume after that, there would have been further additions to it, right? Um, after that, there, there were further additions. Um, but Ms. Lo and I were not aware of all of those additions. Okay. The next um, date in the timeline is on the 1st of November, when Ms. Han makes her s speech in Parliament. Did you watch that speech? Yes. So you f followed the series of questions that followed thereafter? By the Leader of the House. By the Leader of the House. Yes. Okay. And thereafter, the Workers' Party issued a statement from the Secretary General. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Ms. Lowe told us that she felt that the statement, and I think it's a point we'll get to when we talk about when you went with her to see the display panel. She felt that the statement could be broader and could inform the public of the details that were already known to the senior, part senior leadership of the Workers' Party at that point in time. Is that something you would agree with as well? It does pain me to say this because it relates to my own party's senior leadership, but my answer is yes. And the reason you say yes is because the statement issued immediately after the 1st of November when Ms. Han made her speech, in fact, shortly after that, the tenor of that statement appears to draw a line between what she did, what she knew and what she did, and the rest of the party. Would that be a fair statement? Can you repeat that again? I'm very sorry. Sure. I said the reason you said yes is because the statement issued immediately after 1st November appears to draw a line between what Ms. Han did and knew and the rest of the party. And I asked whether that would be a fair statement. I don't quite understand what you mean by with the rest of the party. It seems to suggest that no one else was involved in managing this process. No one else was involved in understanding and knowing that this was untrue. It appeared to suggest that, hey, this is the first time we became aware of it as well. And you know what? An MP should not be speaking untruth in Parliament. There was no suggestion that actually, from a very early stage, Ms. Han had informed her senior party leaders, worked with them to devise a solution, listened to them, sought their counsel, and acted in accordance with the guidance that they had given. That's where I'm coming from. Would you agree with that? Yes. On the 2nd of November, the Workers' Party set up a disciplinary panel. Were you surprised that there was a disciplinary panel set up? I was... I was surprised that it was set up at that point in time. And the reason you're surprised is because if there is discipline to be meted out, it ought to have been an inquiry that should have been done earlier. Yes. Correct? Because the very people who sit on that disciplinary panel, the same three people, were the same three people who were aware as of the 8th of August, some three months prior to this, that what she had said in Parliament was false and that she had continued to repeat this falsehood two months later. And I think that's where you're coming from, correct? Yes. On the 4th of November, it's a Deepavali, Ms. Lowe informs us that she was present at Ms. Han's home. Were you also there? On the 4th of November, I can't remember if it was on that particular date, but Ms. Lowe and I did pay a visit to Ms. Khan. Okay. Were you aware of many visits to Ms. Khan's home with Ms. Lo? 
Because if not, then it's likely that they are accurate that this was Deepavali. She was quite clear about that. Um, we didn't have many visits to Ms. Khan's home, so it was probably that. Probably. But I hesitate to confirm because I celebrate Deepavali and um, I didn't celebrate this year, but I, I would have thought that, okay, I would have remembered that it would have been on that day. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, she told us that she, well, first of all, Miss Khan was down and she wanted to be with her. And secondly, she was also aware that Miss Khan had been summoned to see the DP and she had also been asked to provide some evidence. Do you recall that? Yes. And the purpose of that visit was, well, first of all, to be with her and comfort her and secondly, to discuss the nature of the proceedings that would take place and what position she might take? I would say that our purpose really was the former, just to keep her company, but naturally, because this was forthcoming, okay. we, we discussed it. Okay, I understand. Now, I want to get to the 25th of November. and But before I do that, I'd just like to ask if you remember any occasion of significance concerning either the false anecdote or the disciplinary panel or anything that arises from the speech on the 1st of November. Anything of significance between the 4th of November and the 25th of November? Between the 4th of November and the 25th of November? Yes. 4th meaning the, I mean, what I regard as a meeting at her home on Dipavali, which you may or may not uh, agree to, and then the 25th, which I believe is the date at which yourself and Ms. Lowe went to see the DP. Um, the only thing of significance that I remember was the message that we got on 10th November. Inviting you to... Um, to all Workers' Party members. Okay. To make submissions. Okay. Besides that? Besides that... I can't remember anything particularly significant, but I should add that there was quite a number of things... I, a number of conversations that were going on because uh, naturally Ms. Khan was worried about um, what the disciplinary panel would um, find. Yes. I do remember that uh, Ms. Lo had contacted Mr. Singh because she had expressed to him and she had um, expressed to me the same concerns that she was worried about the nature of the sessions with the members because the membership didn't have what we understood to be the fuller picture. Okay. And so it would be a bit odd for members to, to share views about, because they're supposed to be investigating her discipline with regard to the lie, but... I understand where you're coming from, Mr. Nathan, and I think I also understand Ms. Lowe's reservation. I mean, the point is this. You have three members of the CDM party leadership. They are the ones on the discipline panel. Essentially, they are the ones who decide Ms. Khan's fate, right? Make recommendations to the CEC. They are also the same three who were the first and up to that point in time in November, the only people in Workers' Party to know that what Ms. Khan said in Parliament was false and had given advice and met with her and were aware that she had acted in a manner which is consistent with that advice. And so, not disclosing this, when you invite a broader spectrum of party members, activists, volunteers to come and give a view, would only be inviting a slanted and jaundiced view, correct? I would say that, um, can I respond to that in three parts, based on what you just said? The first is that, um, I think you mentioned that they ultimately have, um, uh, let me rephrase because I don't want to misquote you, but you, you suggested that the three of them would have decided her fate. I think technically, if she hadn't resigned, then it would have been the CEC, technically, but I think the three of them would have had um, influence well, simply no, what because... I, what I meant was if you look at the terms of reference given to the DP, they are supposed to fact find and make recommendations as to what to do with her to so, the CEC. In my view, the DP is almost like analogous to this committee in that eventually you come up with a recommended penalty and then 
um, just as how Parliament would debate the report of this committee, the CC would then debate the findings of the DP and vote on that recommended penalty. So that's the first thing. The second thing that you mentioned was that um, the three of them were the only ones in the WP to have had knowledge. Technically, Ms. Law and I did as well. So, so I, said, uh, uh, WP sorry, I may not have said it, but I meant the senior leadership of WP. Yes. Um, and thirdly, um, on the issue of whether members would have had a slanted view, I think Ms. Law and I were concerned uh, that they would have had an uninformed view. Well, we, we use different words, but I think we all know. Uninformed view, because if you don't know that the people leading the inquiry had in fact given advice to the very person under inquiry, and that person acted in accordance with the advice, rightly or wrongly, that would be an uninformed view. It would be maybe even a biased view. Correct? Yes. And I think that's where your and Ms. Lowe's reservations were, that if you invited a broader party discussion on this without informing people of these facts, you would naturally have a very different view or, and characterization of the conduct, right? Yes. And in many ways, not dissimilar to what this tribunal or this panel here's committee is doing, if Ms. Han had acted on her own volition, suppressed information, kept it away from anybody else on a frolic of her own. That's one state of mind. It'll be a very different state of mind if one made a mistake, consulted with senior party leaders, owned up to it in a full and frank fashion, sought advice and counsel, got that advice and counsel, acted in in a manner completely consistent with that counsel, and then be subject to an inquiry by that very same people who had given her advice. I think that's the heart of the matter that I'm getting to, Mr. Nathan, and I think you understand what I'm saying. That, I think, creates, in your words, an uninformed, a biased, and I would say completely jaundiced and I would add further, I would say self-serving disciplinary panel by the Workers' Party. Would you agree? I think that in the context of everything that did transpire and did occur, it does pain me to say this, but I would agree. Thank you. I understand where you're coming from, and I thank you for your candor. But it is important for this tribunal to appreciate the gravamen of the situation and to understand the relative culpability of the different individuals and the circumstances. And I think that's what this inquiry is here for. And I appreciate your assistance and your candor for this. Now. To just make sure that we close the loop on the earlier point, Ms. Lowe told me that she had sat with you and prepared for this meeting on the 25th of November before you went to see the DP. Would that be right? I can't remember if we sat down physically or if we had okay. just communicated. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't mean physically sat down, but... Yeah. at least had a meeting of minds and consensus on what you would present to the DP. Yes. Right? And if you could please look at uh, the bundle at page 91. Page 91, line 11. It's a long statement, a series of statements from Ms. Lowe, so if you could just cast your eye over, I won't read it. But she basically says, start by saying, we came prepared with a few points, and I think the we refers to you as well. Yes. And then she made a number of points there. I just wanted to get your confirmation that what she said from line 11 all the way through to the next page, at page 92, line uh, 23, you would agree with. 
because I then made the further point that Mr. Nathan made the same points as you, and she says, yes, we made it together. May so, I be allowed some time to read? Of course, I was good, just, good, just going to tell you what I was getting to, and then give you some time to read it. All right. Um, I've read it and I agree with what Ms. Lowe shared with this committee. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Nathan. Now, one of the points made to the committee quite strongly, and I think Ms. Lowe ex articulated it in very passionate terms, was that Ms. Lowe ought not be made to resign or be expelled from the party. That's a point that you also made. Uh, can you repeat that last bit? Because the, the sound of the door, oh, sorry. I repeat it to you. I do apologise. No problem. I said one of the points made to the committee quite strongly, and I think Ms Lowe articulated it very passionately, was that Ms Han should not be made to resign or be expelled from the party. Would that some, be something you agree with as well? I was of the view that Ms Khan should have continued as an MP, uh, in spite of the mistakes that she had made, but I was also personally of the view that if the CEC had decided that she should be expelled, then so be it. Okay. Were you aware of the meetings or interviews that Ms Han had with the DP? Yes. Can you share what you know and also how you know? Presumably you would have heard from her. Um, I heard directly from Ms Khan. Okay. Can you give us a perspective, when it took place, what was asked of her, what she was asked to produce, what comments were made to her at these sessions. So, I think from the outset, I should mention that the disciplinary committee meetings were supposed to have been confidential, but I fully accept that. It's important to respect Parliament's authority on this. Um, and, I, and so I hope that my fellow party members will understand um, why I'm revealing some details which I'm aware of. Um, my understanding is that Ms Khan had had two meetings with the disciplinary panel. The first was um, before um, they had commenced before the panel had commenced meeting members to seek their views, and in that meeting, um, Ms. Khan had prepared for the meeting, um, assuming that they would have asked her about the details of um, her involvement in the support group, um, the details that um, details of essentially what she had shared in her personal explanation to the House on 1st of November. Um, I'm not sure if they did ask her about that, um, but from what Ms Khan had relayed to Ms Lo and I, um, they had instead focused on other aspects of her um, handling her, her job as Member of Parliament. So that was the first meeting. Um, 
my view, or rather, according to my knowledge, I don't think there was supposed to have been a second meeting, but Ms. Khan had um, appealed to the panel, um, in particular to Mr. Singh, to have uh, to, to meet them a second time. Um, and she had done so because she had wished to share with them her plans for, well, first of all, her achievements as an MP over the past one plus years. And secondly, her her plans for Compassvale, should she have been um, essentially, uh, should she have continued as a MP? Okay, thank you. Do you have a rough date of the first meeting? Um, if you don't I date, can't not... remember the date of the first meeting. The second meeting, I think, Ms. Han told us, took place on the 29th of November. 29th of November, a day before she resigned, yes. That was Monday this week. Right. Uh, Monday, I do apologize, was it a Monday? I've lost track of time because so many things have been happening um, at a very quick pace. Yes. Um, but it was in the morning of of that day. 29th, okay. Now, uh, thank you for that. Let me ask you a few questions. First of all, the expectation that she would be asked about the support group that Ms. Han had would have arisen from the request by the DP to meet with her, right? Yes. Ms. Han shared with us yesterday that she was asked to produce evidence of that support group. Uh, there was an email that was sent to her. Did she tell you? She did tell us that there was an email. I believe it was from our party chair, Ms. Lim. Yes. Um, but I can't remember the, the details of that email. But I do remember that after having received that email, she was of the view that um, she was supposed to furnish details on what she had told Parliament. Yes. But instead, when she went to this meeting with the DP, there was hardly, if at all, any questions on the support group. Based on what Ms. Khan had relayed to us, yes. Right. And instead, there was a general discussion on her achievements and her competence to handle her job on a day-to-day -day basis. Correct? Based on what Ms. Khan had relayed to us, yes. Right. And the discussions on the events in question which gave rise to the DP, i.e. the false statements in Parliament, and the conduct surrounding there too, in your discussions with Ms. Ms. Khan, did she tell you whether they were, they were gone into at all or in any fashion? I can't remember if she had, but what I do remember is that she was very surprised that either they... She was very surprised that either most of the time or all of the time, I can't remember, they had focused on um, her conduct as MP more generally, or more and broadly. And not on the... Events surrounding the false statements. Yes. Which I would suggest to you is odd, given that the entire terms of reference of the display panel was, and I read from the Workers' Party's media statement, was that the CEC has approved the formation of a DP to look into the admissions made by MP Raisha Khan on 1st November, arising from an earlier speech made by the MP in Parliament on 3rd August 2021. So to go into general conduct of achievements and activities and accomplishments as an MP in general terms, and not covering these specific points about the falsehood, would that not strike you as being odd? To be fair to the disciplinary panel, I think in assessing um, her conduct after her personal explanation on November 1st, and, and in context of that, I think it's reasonable to expect a disciplinary panel to also look at other areas, but I was surprised that it seemed like the relative degree of um, importance given to the context of the lie and the context of her broader conduct was lopsided. Yes. So what you're saying is that it's not unreasonable to expect a general inquiry into what else you've done, because that goes towards mitigation, perhaps. That goes towards what's the appropriate sanction. But 
it is odd that the thrust of the discussion was on that rather than the primary issues for which the DP was set up, right? I did feel that, yes. Right. And one reason possibly is because the very same three people involved in DP already had fair, detailed, intimate knowledge of what had gone on. I did feel that, um, so as I mentioned, um, when we found out that a disciplinary panel was going to be formed, I did share earlier that I was surprised at that point in time. Um, and one of the reasons why I was surprised was because technically they know the details. So, so what is it that, about? So you would assume that if... Um, a disciplinary panel were to be called that they would inquire about further details. Which they did not in this case. Which, to my understanding, based on what Ms. Khan had said, um, they either did not or perhaps they did, but to a very small extent. Okay. And because the thrust of this first meeting was on her general accomplishments and her work as an MP on the ground in Compassvale, it prompted her to have to come back a second time to make a request to see them to explain her accomplishments because she had not been given notice that that would be the issue on the first meeting, right? I would agree with that, yes. Right. And she then went to this meeting and she told us that she prepared, did some homework, made a presentation on what she had done and what she hopes to achieve and made a presentation on the 29th of November in the morning. Now, up to that point in time, and the reason I'm asking you this is because I'm trying to evaluate the events that quickly unfolded thereafter. Did Ms. Han discuss with you and tell you that she intended to resign her position as an MP? Um, Minister Tong, I think that the truth is that Ms. Khan did not want to resign as an MP before 30th of November because she had told us that she wanted to continue serving her residents because I quote, um, if I may quote her, she said, I have a duty to my residents. Yes. And I mean, you, you know her directly and have spoken with her, but I, looking at it from the outside in, looking at what she has done and her conduct on the 29th of November in wanting to come and persuade the DP, despite being somewhat blindsided by the first meeting that there was a discussion on her general achievements, came back and made a presentation and basically was a stout defence of her position and looking forward and telling them what she intends to achieve as an MP. That's far from the conduct of someone who has thrown in the towel and wants to resign, right? Yes. And so, between the 29th of November and the 30th of November, what changed? Between the 29th of November and 30th November, um, based on my understanding, with a, uh, based on my understanding due to a conversation that I had had with Ms. Khan after her second interview with the disciplinary panel, she informed me that after she had told the panel about her plans for Compassvale. The panel had, I'm not sure if collectively or if it was one or two of them, had suggested to her that she may want to consider resigning because she had lost the confidence of her colleagues. Did that suggestion affect Ms. Khan? Yes. Can you give us a bit more detail as to how it affected her? Um, I, I should add, yes, in my view, in, in my opinion. Um, it affected her because in that phone call that she had had with me, she, it almost seemed as if she was very... Um, I mean, she went into the meeting. In fact, before the meeting, um, she was telling me that she was nervous to, to present this to the disciplinary panel. And I was telling her what you have to be nervous about. I mean, if you really want to continue being an MP, then, you know, go for it. Um, and so she had gone in, I think, with the hope that they would hear her out. Um, and so when I had that conversation with her after, she sounded rather disappointed that um, 
in spite of the fact that she had tried to address the concerns about her general conduct as an MP um, and her general uh, competence in different areas as an MP, um, that that was what she had heard from the panel. All right. And shortly after that, she decided to resign. She, de she decided to resign, in my view, on the 30th of... Okay, so essentially, after she had come out of the that second meeting, she started asking herself, um, what are the odds that the party, whether it's the CC, the broader membership, the leadership, what are the odds that they wanted her to, to continue on? And I think she felt that the odds were quite low. And so she, in my view, that's why I think she decided to resign the next day. The odds of her, her being able to receive continued support from the party, is yes. that what you mean? Was quite low. Meaning to say if she were to continue as an MP, well, first of all, whether she'd be able to survive the CC vote on the, th on the 30th of November. Um, and by survive, I mean not be expelled. Um, and secondly, in terms of whether, um, even if she were to survive that, that vote, whether she would be able to have a good working relationship with her parliamentary colleagues from the party, mm -hmm. as well as whether the membership of the party um, would accept her staying on. Okay. So these, to my knowledge, based on my conversation with her, um, on the 29th of November was what was going on in her mind. Yes. I mean, to that I would add, a key consideration must surely be that if the party, and represented by the most senior of the party members, are coming to you and asking you to consider resigning. I think that's a very strong signal, isn't it? I'd say two things. Um, firstly, to be fair to the senior leaders of the party, they didn't explicitly instruct her to resign. Um, but secondly, given their seniority, I think that, you see, the thing is, I don't for a second believe that um, the CC of the Workers' Party are um, a monolith. I think they all have their own minds and they can make decisions by themselves. Um, but I think naturally, if you've lost the support of, or seemingly lost the support of your party leadership, then that would spell the end of the road. Yes. I mean, to your point that they didn't explicitly ask her to resign. I mean, I think you and I know that you don't quite need to spell it out in as many words. Here you have the senior party leadership in whatever form of language. I think the message was quite clear, right? I think that... Ms Khan felt like the message was clear. Um, there was a CEC meeting on the 30th of November. And I think, at least based on what I know from public sources, it was supposed to have been sometime in the evening of the 30th of November. By that time, were you aware, and you, can, you, you may not be aware, but if you can, please help us. Were you aware if the disciplinary panel had already completed its work, present, prepared a report and presented it to the CEC? Uh, no. I was not aware that they had already... Um... So my understanding was that when I heard that there would be a CC meeting that evening, um, my understanding is that the disciplinary panel would present their report to the CC um, and then they would deliberate on the matter. But I should also add that proceedings of the CC are not as in as members of the WP, whether we are ordinary members or cadre members, proceedings of the CC are not um, something that we are privy to mm -hmm. on a usual basis. I understand. So I don't wish to mislead the committee by saying that this is my uh, by saying that this is definitely no, true. No, which is why I caveated my question by saying, to your knowledge, as far as you know, there was no such report that was prepared, and uh, not. To your knowledge, such a report was not done and not presented to the CEC? No. 
And the last, at least very close to the 30th, was still Ms Khan, who had come before the CEC to give representations, which presumably the DP would take into account as well. Um, can you repeat that, sorry? The DP is set up to investigate, fact-find, make recommendations and report to the CEC. The DP is under an obligation, obviously, to listen to all the submissions that comes before it. Whether it agrees or disagrees, it has to consider and make a view. And based on that, make a report and send to the CEC. What I'm saying is the last, at least what we know as the last or very late submi submission was made by Ms Khan on the 29th itself, just the day before. And that must also have been something that the DP should consider in making its report, right? Yes. All right. Now, um, Mr Nathan, I prepared a chronology of events which roughly accords with what I had taken you through and I want to just show it to you so that you can confirm parts of it. Could I have copies given to Mr. Nathan, please? So, Mr. Nathan, let me just orient you to this document. It's a chronology starting from 3rd of August right through to the 2nd of December, which is yesterday. And it covers the key discussions that we've had over the course of this morning or afternoon. And as far as I can tell, you have agreed to this in the form that I've set out here. Save some additions and clarifications that I'll take you through now. And if there's anything else you don't agree with, let me know and then we'll go through it. So let's start from the top. 3rd of August, there was a speech in Parliament. I think that's a fact. You would agree. Tell me if you don't agree, okay? You also mentioned that sometime in between the 3rd and the 7th, you had spoken with Ms Khan. You recall? Between the 3rd and the 7th, yes. That's right. Okay. On the 7th, Ms Khan spoke to Mr Pritam Singh and told him that she had spoken an untruth in Parliament. Uh, no. On the 7th, Ms Khan had informed Ms Lo and I that she had lied and that the only other people who knew were her husband and Mr Singh. Yes. So, so she would have spoken to Mr Singh, which is what I asked you about earlier. Oh, I, I do apologise. I thought I heard you say that she had spoken to Mr Singh on the 7th of August. She had spoken to Mr Singh by the 7th of August. Yes, that's right. Okay. So if you want, we can say by the 7th of August. On the 8th of August, let me take you through these points. There was a meeting that took place. I, I'm asking you not so much to speak to someone's intention, which I know you can't do. I'm asking you whether now that we've gone through the facts and circumstances, whether or not these points here represent factual matters which happen in the timeline because this would assist us in forming a view on the timeline, okay? And this information sometimes, like for example, the 12th of October sitting, you might learn about something that happened prior to it later, but you do know on the 12th that a meeting took place on the 3rd, and that would be part of the flow as well. This okay. is what I mean. Okay? All right. So there was a meeting that took place at Mr. Singh's house where these people were present, Mr. Singh, Ms. Lim, and Mr. Manap. I put a page reference here. Ms. Han told them that the statement she made in Parliament was false. If you like, you can turn to the page and have a look at it. This is her evidence. When asked about the reaction, Ms. Han said, incredible disappointment, lots of anger and so on. I read this to you earlier. Yes. And you said this also com comported with what you saw of the message, what you thought of the message you received. At D, Ms Han agreed that the upshot of the meeting was that the members of the Workers' Party had decided that there would be no need to clarify the position and so on. Again, it's at page 161 of her evidence. At E, after the meeting, RK, which is Ms Han, sent a text into Alia to yourself as well, and I think we saw the text earlier. 
and this was sent contemporaneously at or around the same time when the meeting was concluded, which was 12.41 p.m. on the 8th of August. Do you need to see the text again? Can I, just to check the time. Um, yes, second page at the bottom, 8th August, 12.41 p.m. Yes, that's right. Okay. Then we go to the 10th of August. You remember you described a separate occasion that mo both Miss Lowe and yourself went to see Mr. Singh on a separate matter. Yes. And the takeaway from this, both from Miss Lowe and yourself, was that Mr. Singh knew about the falsehood in Parliament. Yes. At 10th August B, Miss Lowe was a switch that senior leadership was aware and it was an expectation that the problem would be sorted out at that level. I think you also shared that view. Yes. The next key occasion, because I think we agreed that there was nothing until the 3rd of October, right? So the next key occasion is on the 3rd of October. Mr. Singh visits Ms. Han at her home. Yes. B, Mr. Singh was expecting that Ms. Han would be pressed about her lie since it was the first occasion since August that she'll be back in Parliament. Correct? Correct. And then I, I just put in her address. Which I read to you earlier. Where she says, if I were to retain the narrative, or if I were to continue the narrative, there will be no judgment. At, on the 4th of October, several things. One, Ms. Han addresses Minister Shanmugam's questions in Parliament. Two, there were several clear and direct false statements that were made in response to Minister Shanmugam. Three, at the time the statements were made, Mr. Singh, Mr. Manap, and Ms. Lim would have been aware that they were false as she was making those statements in Parliament. Correct? Yes. I think we went one step further and said that actually only they from the members of Parliament would be aware. Yes. Right. 4th October at D, this one you said you were not aware. There was a meeting that took place at the LO office, but to be fair to you, you said you were not aware. So this reference point is coming from Ms. Han directly. So save for this, I, I will not ascribe any direct knowledge of you on your part to this because you said you were not aware. Okay. So you can Thank you. ignore D. All right. And uh, as a consequence, you can also ignore the last paragraph. Okay. Now, paragraph uh, 12 October, this one you would be aware. Ms. Han first calls yourself and Ms. Lo and says that she will admit and clarify the false statements in Parliament. You then have a discussion. Um... She called us separately. Okay, separately. And I'm not sure if she called Miss Lowe, but she did call me. Okay. I will not... She did call Miss Lowe, and uh, I have that from her, but... Uh, what I meant was that I knew that she had communicated to Miss Lowe, but by way of a text or call, I'm not sure. Okay, all right. I understand that. So subject to that caveat, you would agree with the 12th of October entries? Um, for A, yes. For B, there's a message that she sent. I think you see that in the bundle as well. And then for C, you would agree because you then met with Mr. Singh at his home that evening. Yes. Okay. On the 22nd of October, again, I took this from one of the messages from Ms. Lowe. I think you were present and you said this is one occasion where you exchange views on the drafting. Yes. 1st November, Ms. Han makes a speech in Parliament. WP issues a statement. I think that's a matter of record. Likewise, 2nd of November, the DP was set up. On the 4th of November, I think you said you weren't sure whether it was on Dipavali. So I, I will also take that caveat. But I think your recollection is that there was such a meeting. You were just not sure which day. Yes. 25th November, we heard your evidence on this. There was a meeting that you and Ms. Lowe requested to see the DP. And you did so at Workers' Party HQ on the 25th of November at 8.30 a.m. Um, P.M. 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 All right. I will subject to that. They, meaning yourself and Ms. Lowe, told Workers' Party DP that RK should not resign. And I quoted Ms. Lowe's evidence. Um, which may is, I... Uh say something about point B. So it says here they tell the WPE DP that RK should not resign. Um, I think it's more accurate to say that we told them that in our view she should not 
uh, be expelled from the party. Yeah, I, I don't think we... But essentially, it would have come down to the, the same uh, outcome. Yeah, I mean, so in that sense, I don't disagree with the um, the meat of point B. The substance of B would be what you would agree with. Yes. Right. That's what you're trying to say. Okay, thank you. On C, I think I asked you to read this and you said you agree, right? Yes. Okay. 29th November. Uh, we just covered this earlier this week. RK met with the Workers' Party DP at HQ to discuss her performance as an MP. You recall we talked about this. She came to present. And then she's asked to consider resigning. 10.30 sounds right, yes. Okay. 29B, she's asked to consider resigning. Correct? Yes. We just talked about this. And then 30th, she resigns. Second, there's a press conference. Okay? Yes. So, can I take it, Mr. Nathan, that you agree with this document, save that on the 4th of October, under item D, you have no personal knowledge of such a meeting? Uh, yes. And that at item uh, 12 October, item A, the call, you're not sure what form Ms. Khan communicated to Ms. Lowe, whether it was a call or a message, but you do know that they communicated, correct? Yes. And on item B at 25th November, in substance, you would agree? On 25th of November, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I beg your pardon. My colleague reminds me that it should be 25th November, 8.30 p.m. instead of p.m. Yes. Okay. Chairman, so, uh, sorry to interrupt, Minister. I just want to clarify... Let, a, me, let me finish. Uh, uh, a point with you on the 22nd of October. I, I can wait for, your, for you to finish. Yes. So, based on this, this would be an accurate timeline, in your view, with the discussions that we've just had. Correct. Um, also adding the caveat that I'm not sure if... I can't remember the exact date of the... It, it says here that we met at the WPHQ on 22nd October. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact date, but um, as discussed earlier, it was at around that time. Okay. It's either on or shortly after 22nd October. Would that be fair? Uh, yes. And I'll, I'll just tell you why I say this. If you just pick up this bundle with the... WhatsApp messages and go to around the fourth page. You see at the bottom of that page, 22nd October, there's a message between Pritam Singh and Miss Lo. And uh, on the 22nd of October, there was a message that says change of time meeting at 11 a.m. Maybe that might have been the next day or the day after. So 23rd, 24th October, perhaps. Would that be fair? Yes, because this screenshot is from... The message was from... Was that 7.30pm? Okay, that's so a fair I point. I think... Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So shall I say 23rd or 24th October? Um, I... Or perhaps we say this, shortly after 22nd October. Would that be more... Accurate? I think the, the best way to put it is shortly after 7.30pm um, on... 22nd of October. Um, yes, but this is something that I can help to clarify down the road if necessary. Okay, that would be useful. Thank you. Okay, besides what we've just discussed, is there anything else you disagree with on this chronology? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Perhaps Mr. Tan can clarify. Oh, uh, Minister, actually, I just want to clarify with you on your description of the 22nd October and you had put in A, WP had a meeting... I think this is um isn't um I think from the um evidence yesterday there was some description of who which were the individuals at the meeting, right? So isn't it more appropriate to put the name of the individuals at the meeting rather than to say that WP at the meeting at WPH group? It's it's the description. Well I the think accuracy and the description. I, I I mean I can put it to to Mr. Yudish as well. Okay, let's put it this way so that we don't get into for, a for, for better description. Let's, yeah, so the WP here refers to Mr. Singh, Ms. Lim, Ms. Han, yourself, Ms. Lo. Yes. Correct? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Minister. So with those clarifications, would you agree with this chronology? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I've got no further questions.
Thank you, Mr. Nader. Thank you, Minister. Mr. Grace, any question? Uh, thank you, Mr. Naden. Yesterday, when um, uh, Ms. Khan gave uh, her evidence, she mentioned that um, her decision to go to the Parliament to give her statement to to give a full account of what happened on 1st November was made uh, on the 12th of October. Just to recall, uh, somewhere on the 4th, that was when she was asked to give details in the parliament by Minister Shan. And at, at the end of that, that uh, sitting, there was a meeting with Ms. Sylvia Lim, Ms. Pritasim at Ello's office. She hasn't made up her mind yet. Uh, and um, 7th October, uh, she has received an um, email from the police uh, to give details, she hasn't made up her mind yet um, about coming clean to the so-called go, going to the uh, parliament to give account. Uh, and it's on 12 October that, that she has made that decision uh, with uh, party leaders, Ms. Sylvia Lim and Ms. Prita, Mr. Pritam Singh. Uh, you able to confirm that? Did she, is that con con consistent to what she has told you? Um, everything in, in what you just described, I find consistent, except I can't confirm the um, the part about 7th October having, I think you mentioned she received um, an email from the police. Did she share with you about having to respond, receiving this email and having to respond to the police? Um, she did share with us that she received an email from the police. Um, but I think at that point in time, Ms. Khan was essentially also waiting on advice from the higher-ups, in other words, the senior party leadership, as to how she should respond. Did she give you any inclination that she will go to the parliament on 1st November to make that statement that she did? She did say that, um, so I, I don't want to misquote uh, Ms. Khan or, the, or what she told me the leaders might have said, but my impression was that she or they or all of them had decided that um, going to parliament would have been um, their preferred option as opposed to... Is that before or after 12th October meeting that they had? I can't remember. Um, so 12th October was, was the time when you had a meeting with Miss Lowe? I do apologise. It was before the 12th of October. Because on the 12th of October, um, Miss Khan had said that the party leaders and she herself had wanted to come clean. Um, may I retract what I just said about um, whether it was before the 12th of October? Because I think now thinking about it, I honestly can't remember whether it was before or after 12th of October. Uh, I think we've just gone through the sequence of events. I think it's, it's um, here that she will admit there's an A. So nothing in between. 4th October and 12th October, right? So basically, I was trying to ask whether she has informed you about police and whether she has indicated to you whether that has made her make a decision, change her mind about coming to the statement, to make the statement in Parliament. So I can't remember if the police had contacted her before or after 12th October. But I knew that by but I knew that at or possibly just after twelve October, they had agreed that the preferable thing to do in their view was to come to Parliament instead of attend the police uh, interview or meeting. Did Ms. Khan share with you um, about 
when she confided this to her family besides her husband? She did. She said that she confided after the 12th of October. So in between the 12th of October and the 1st of November, closer to the 1st of November, because she had a great deal of hesitation um, in wanting to... great deal of hesitation in, in um, breaking the news to her parents. So am I right to describe the event as she has made the decision on 12th October, thereafter she informed her family after 12th October? Yes. It's just... Uh, I'm just trying to understand um, the events so as to get a better position or understanding of um, the statement made by Mr. Pritam Singh in the press that actually the few months lapse from August was actually to give her time to inform her family? Have they, is, that, uh, this, is that the reason for her to delay? Or as we have heard, actually the decision was made on 12 October before there was a need to inform. Prior to that, um, the position was to keep the narrative and not to disclose. The critical date was 12 October. I do think that there is some truth to what Mr Singh said because um, essentially on the 12th of October when we met at his house, um, he did express... Um, this concern uh, that her family was not aware of what had happened. Did Mr. Pritam Singh express this concern in August when you met? I don't remember. So was it a, a factor as to why the decision was taken only on 12 October? Or I would put it to you that the decision was made on 12 October before they decided that it's time to tell the family. I think it could have been one of the factors, but I am unable to to speak on Mr Singh's behalf. Have, has in your discussion with Mr Singh, you have several rounds of discussion, has that need to inform the family been a factor? It was a factor. But in what way? In, um, just in um, having concern that she would have to essentially deal with this personal um, matter of telling her family at home before um, essentially revealing to, before coming clean to Parliament and to the nation. In a sense, this was something that was a factor or a concern that I think all of us had throughout the process. So as I mentioned earlier, when we first heard about it, um, obviously we, we knew that um, because only her husband had known about it at that point in time on um, by the 7th of August, uh, naturally, I think, certainly for myself, and I suspect for Miss Lowe as well, there was a concern that she will have to at some point tell her parents this. So I do think that it was a factor. But I'm unable to say as to whether it was the main factor that... Um, or indeed, I I, um, I would hazard a guess that it wasn't the main factor that led to the long period of um, that wait between um, them knowing that um, she had lied and the apology on 1st of November. If it had been the main factor, then I think your series of meetings would have been to discuss when Ms Khan should tell the family and what is the earliest time that she should go to the parliament. That didn't happen in August. That didn't happen in September. That only happened in the second half of October, after 12th October to be exact. So I agree with um, the way you described it, but I would also say that that discussion may not, hypothetically, may not have um, involved Miss Lowe and I. It could have been um, discussed by, um, and I say could have hypothetically been discussed by um, 
the party leaders and Ms. Khan by themselves. So I, I generally agree with how you described it, but um, because you mentioned your meetings, so that would imply my meetings with Ms. Khan. So I, I think that's not necessarily true because um, whether Ms. Khan were to inform her family about it or not, I think it, it's almost like above Ms. Lowe's and my pay grade, to use the term, not that we are paid to, to help out in the Workers' Party. No, I, I totally understand the concerns uh, about um, Ms. Khan's well-being as well as her need to inform the family. But am I right to say that that did not come into the picture of your general discussions until after 12 October? Of course, there's a general concern about her well-being and how her family will respond to it. But that wasn't the main decision to on the timing on which November uh, statement was made. I would say that it didn't generally occur as a main concern. Thank you. There was uh, also a discussion about um, in Miss, I, I don't have the um, uh, transcript with me, but I think Miss Khan mentioned something about um, there will be no judgment from Mr. Pritam Singh sometime in uh, August. Uh, no, about uh, I think you mean third, third of October. October. Yeah. Um, was it just from Ms. Khan herself, or did you also hear this from Mr. Pritam Singh himself? Because from uh, what we were told yesterday by Ms. Lo, that that was a confirmation that Mr. Pritam Singh has also given, that was the understanding she has gotten from Mr. Pritam Singh. So this was something that we heard both from Ms. Khan as well as from Mr. Singh. Can you tell us how did you hear it? And what's the occasion that you have heard it? Miss Lo and I heard it on the 12th of October when we met with Mr. Singh at his place of residence. Um, and he had expressed to us that regardless of whether she had maintained the line of or the argument of uh, maintaining um, the survivors or the victims' um, confidentiality, or whether she decided to tell the truth, that he would not judge her. How did you interpret that? I... I thought, I mean, I thought two things. I think, first of all, um, personally, it did sound like he was empathising with her. Um, I think that's natural for anyone to do. But at the same time, I also thought that it was a bit indecisive. Not a bit indecisive, it was, it was rather indecisive. So uh, this was some. What's the context that le led to that statement? Was it something that you asked? Was that something that's offered by Mr. Singh? Could you remember? I don't remember what exactly we had been discussing before that. So I I feel like I can't give you a factual answer to that question. When Mr. Singh said that, was it to give you um, assurance of a position or to give you an indication of the party leader's position? What context was it? I think it was an indication of his personal position on the matter, but I think that ordinarily um, we took it to mean that there was also the leadership's, the senior leadership's position on the matter. And perhaps that was an assumption on our part, but yes. Thank you. Thank you. I could just build on what um, Mr. Grace, who just asked you. So essentially, 
your impression from what Mr. Singh conveyed to you on 12 August uh, suggests 12 October, 12, 12 October uh, would suggest that um, as opposed to what was said in the press statement, uh, the press conference that was released and as read by Mr. Tong earlier, that an order was given for her to come clean. That wasn't the impression that you got from that conversation with him. That Was there any impression that that would have been a direction given to her to come clean? No. What, and so perhaps if you could explain to us, what would your impression be that actually to continue on the present trajectory of maintaining the narrative and that they wouldn't judge her on that if she had continued to do so? I think that, I mean, just taking what Mr. Singh had told Ms. Lo and I um, in terms of its ordinary meaning, I think that if you tell me that I'm not going to judge you if you do A or B, then it simply means that I'm not, I'm neither instructing you to do A or B, but at the same time, I'm also not, um, at the same time, you're free to do what you... Certainly what it would mean is that there wasn't a direction given to her to take a particular, uh, to take the, to take the uh, action of confessing and coming clean. Yes. As uh, sort of the statement made, uh, according to the CNA article that he said, and that he couldn't understand why she didn't respond and she had to account for that. Yes. Okay. Further questions for other members? Lucky? Uh, Dennis, anything? Don? I do, sorry. So after so Mr. Nadin. So just when you mentioned that uh, when Ms. Khan received uh, the invitation from police to meet up, you mentioned that um, she will respond and that is based on how the party leadership will have guided her. So based on your understanding of Ms. Khan, do you think she will have accepted the meeting invite? Should the party leadership have guided her to do so? I think that she may have been, I think I can't. Based on your understanding of her. I think it would be a bit unfair for me to, to make a judgment as to what she would have done in that case. Yeah. Okay. Any other further points, anyone? No. Chairman, just a quick one on, on, on that question Don asked. Was there any um, indication from her as to why making a statement in Parliament was better rather than making a police statement or responding to the police? Because she, they, they wrote to her three times. She didn't respond for all three times. But I'm quite sure she was advised, as you said. But did she say why? I believe that... There was this idea that at that point in time, actually now thinking about it, there's no specific reason as to why, um, there's no specific reason that I can recall as to why that occurred. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a question in my mind as well. Yeah. So the, the issue of the police writing to her and her not responding, this was not an issue that she discussed with you? She did discuss it with us. Um, what and transpired? She, I think, I believe she consulted a lawyer to get some legal advice as to, but that's the thing, as, I'm not sure as to what. Um, so I, and I'm not entirely certain of the conversations that she would have had with the party leadership on this matter. But now, um, I mean, reflecting, I do remember um, thinking that, I mean, I had no reason to disbelieve that her going or not going to speak to the police was not a collective decision made by the party leadership and herself. So meaning that um, your impression would be that there was probably some discussion with the party leadership and that was the collective decision that she wouldn't respond to the police? Yes. 
uh, in your discussions with her on this issue with regards to the police, what else was covered? Um, I do believe that there was some discussion on parliamentary privilege. Um, because when you come to parliament, you can have a certain degree of freedom without, uh, of course, abusing it. Um, as opposed to speaking to the police where you wouldn't have that. But the thing is, I cannot remember where this point was made or why it was made. I just remember that that was something that floated in the conversation. What else was covered? Um, I think that was about it, based on my understanding. Okay. Just follow up uh, on this discussion. Um, is that conversation between you and Ms Khan done through phone call or is it uh, messages? I can't recall now. We ask that maybe you can track your chats, I will check. Uh, logs, if there's any um, log of those conversations, that would be very helpful for us. All right. Thank you. So there are no further other questions uh, for now. We'd like to thank you for coming before the committee. As highlighted, there are a number of uh, references that uh, Ms. Edwin and others might have raised with regards to, I think, uh, materials that might be useful, as you have seen the text messages between yourself and your group chat. Uh, so some of the issues that have been raised here, it would be useful, uh, whether through WhatsApp, Telegram, whatever means of comms you may have with the others, emails, and so on and so forth. Uh, it'd be useful to furnish them to us so that we can also cross-reference and, and, and uh, check on it. Uh, there may also be other conversations or issues pertaining to this uh, case that may not have been raised here, but if you feel it's useful, do let us know. If I may to ask you, is there any other witnesses you think would be useful to come before Committee of Privilege to for us to interview to better understand the circumstances with regards to this case? To be honest, no. And I say that because the vast majority of our party members, and I would hazard a guess the majority of our um, members of parliament and CC members may not have had the full picture of what had happened since August. So would it be correct to say that even uh, as shared with us by Ms. Risa Khan, as was conveyed to her by the disciplinary panel, that she doesn't have the confidence of her colleagues in Sengang GRC, uh, it would be fair to say that the members in Sengang GRC, as along with the rest of the other members, would actually not have a clear idea of actually all these things have transpired, that she has sought advice, she has sought counsel, and as of now, probably wouldn't have that full picture. Would that be a fair assumption? Unfortunately, I do think that that's a fair assumption. Um, the three remaining MPs in Sengkang GRC um, never asked for any of this to happen, and they've just been keeping at their jobs, trying to do what's best for the residents. Um, and, of course, I'm not privy to conversations that MPs have amongst themselves. So I cannot say with certainty what they do and do not know. Um, but I think it's important for me to note that um, the members of my party, and as you mentioned, um, the Sengkang GRC members of parliament may not have had the full picture. But I, I don't want to say that um, with... 100% certainty, because I could be wrong. Fully understand. So do furnish us with whatever details, emails, telegram, messages, etc., uh, as much as possible. I think, as, as we have explained, really our job is to fact-find. Uh, obviously, as you uh, realise, this is a grave matter. Uh, as, uh, it's very different from being misinformed, uh, erroneously highlighting facts that might be inaccurate, but it was a deliberate lie. And I think what we're trying to determine is the circumstances behind which and ascertaining what sanctions we may take. And therefore, any factors that might be mitigating uh, uh, would always be useful. That's why the full context, that's why we went to the details that we have with regards to how things evolve, the various conversations taking place, impressions, because that would help us form a view as to 
the degree of responsibility the respective individuals might bear. So the transcript of the proceedings will be shared with you uh, for verification, so do go through it. And if you have any minor amendments, etc., please make the changes and send the transcripts back to us. Uh, please do note that the transcripts, any evidence given to the committee are not to be disclosed to anyone, not to be published. And I think the conversations that we've had here to be kept strictly confidential uh, until the committee has presented its reports to Parliament. So there are various reports that we may need to make to Parliament, and that would include the relevant summaries, transcripts, footages that may be submitted, and thereby being in the public domain as well. Uh, so for now, uh, you may withdraw, but uh, do remain in Parliament House. Uh, we won't, I don't think there will be a need to call you back today, uh, but I think there will be some follow-up admin uh, that might be required uh, if, if needed. So our staff will accompany you out to the waiting room. All right. Mr. Chairman, I just want to uh, make one clarification, which is that earlier on we had asked you for a variety of documents and uh, chats and so on, which you say you will check. So rather than go back and forth, I just thought I'll clarify with you what we are after. You saw some of the examples we, we showed you earlier. But what we had told uh, previous witnesses was that it's not sufficient to just give us that particular message. It's we need to see the trail. Of course, not irrelevant discussions with friends and uh, non-interested parties, but the trail needs to be established so that we are able to understand the context in which some messages were said. So bear this in mind. Secondly, bear in mind that you know I've gone through with you the key dates beginning from August through to November. Uh, those are dates that you should have in mind, and anything that relates to or arises from the false statement or the discussion that you had with the parties on any of those key dates should also become documents that you would produce. Okay? Thank you very much. And, and just to Thank add, you. I know that in terms of editing might be a bit complex, but if there are portions, because obviously interspersed in every conversation, there may be a lot of stuff that perhaps are not really relevant. Uh, what you could do is to print them up and then mark it out. So, so while maybe certain names, if it's not necessary to be there, or certain comments, that might be irrelevant. But the rest of the conversations would help us have that full sense of that flow. Uh, that would be useful. All right. Yep. So if uh, Sergeant Adams, if you can accompany uh, Mr. Nader now. But thank you once again for being here and sharing with us your perspectives. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.